Beloved, this evening as we continue, I would like for us to turn in our Bibles to the uh, Scripture text this evening. The 1 John chapter 2, verses 6 uh, through 11. 1 John chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which he had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard, from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he's in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is not occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth neither whither he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his, his eyes. May God give us grace this year as we anticipate our serving Him and worshiping our triune God. Give us the grace that we may, as we were instructed to in this text, particularly in verse 6, and that is uh, to walk as Jesus Christ walked. In John 13, 15, the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, that word is echoed here tonight, and that is to us as well. Jesus said, I have given you an example that is in his life, that ye should do as I have done unto you. If you would like to know how you should live, you will find it throughout the pages of Scripture. But especially uh, as we observe the life of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, in the Gospels, we see our Lord Jesus Christ teaching us how we are to live. In that Sermon on the Mount, there is uh, rich resources there of, of how we are to live. We find that after our Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, that uh, there was miraculous powers given to them to heal. Remember how it was in Acts chapter 4. There was Peter and John, and uh, they had healed a lame man, a man who had never walked before, and he was above 40 years of age. And they prayed, and God healed this impotent man. Not only did he get up and walk, but he leaped. And the scripture says that those who saw it still were just in unbelief. They marveled that the apostles were given this uh, gift of performing miracles. And so they watched, as they watched the Lord Jesus in his earthly ministry, they watched Peter and John, who had performed that miracle through the power of God. And it says that these religious leaders that were just looking for something to find fault with, as they did with the Lord Jesus, that they took note of Peter and John. And it said that they 
took note of them and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. This, they were not schooled in all the uh, schools that they have uh, for learning uh, theology as the religious leaders had. And yet, they were able to perform, by God's grace, uh, such a miracle. But there was one other thing that really struck these religious leaders, and that was that it says they took knowledge of Peter and John that they had been with Jesus. Now, they could see Jesus through their life. And really, we ought to look uh, at our life in the same manner, that by the grace of God and uh, the fruit of, of God's Spirit working in us more and more, uh, the people around us, the world around us, uh, should see Christ in us. Thus we see, uh, we see the Apostle Peter later on in 1 Peter chapter 2, 21. Uh, telling us that we are to walk in Jesus' steps. For even here in two, were you called, when we talk about our salvation, very seldom do people talk about their salvation as a calling. When uh, we uh, go to someone and say, when were you saved? Well, that's a biblical term, but almost never does uh, one ask uh, when were you called? <laughs> well, sometimes uh, it's hard to put a finger on when we were exactly called, but we know there was a changed life, whereas before we didn't like the things of God, we didn't like the scriptures, and then all of a sudden God worked in our hearts and we had a great love for God, a great love for our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, certainly uh, it would be an evidence that that's when God worked upon our hearts. So, beloved, when we think about walking as Jesus walked, we ought to think of it this way. We ought to walk in lockstep with him. Now, some of you uh, may have, uh, in your time, in, this, in your pilgrimage, uh, lived in a very cold country where there's very deep snow. And uh, I remember as a young fellow, uh, I grew up in uh, close around Lake Michigan, and we got a lot of snow. And uh, I was the younger of uh, eight boys in our family, and uh, they liked to go hunting and, and uh, that sort of thing and getting out into the country, and sometimes that snow was pretty deep. And I can remember uh, walking in the uh, place where they walked because they sunk down maybe a foot or two because of the depth of the snow. And so I would walk in their steps. And that's exactly what we are taught here by Peter, that we are to follow his steps. We read the scriptures, and then we, by the grace of God, we are to practice what we read. We are to follow his commandments. We are to take note of his character and, and uh, his words in the scriptures. The Geneva note uh, on this particular verse 6, verse 6 says, he that is one with Christ must live out Christ's life. That is, he must walk in his steps. Now, if we would walk as the Lord Jesus Christ, we must, first of all, note there in verse 6, that this walking as Jesus walked comes from our union with Him. In that passage in John 15, we are likened to a branch that bears fruit, and we are to bring forth much fruit. And that branch is connected to a vine. And it is the branch's union with the vine in Christ that enables that branch to produce 
fruit. The same thing is true uh, with regards to walking as Christ walked. We must be in union with Christ, in Christ. I haven't taken the time to count all the times that the little preposition in, I-N, uh, is in Ephesians chapter 1, but in Christ, it occurs at least 10 times, and I'm sure it's even more. And so our life is about being, living out, being in union with Jesus Christ. Verse 6 says, He that saith he abideth in him, that is, in union with Christ, ought, and I want us to note the word ought, I'll say something about that, himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Now, the word walked here means our whole manner of life and conduct is to be after the manner of Jesus Christ. Now, when it says, he that abideth him in him ought himself also so to walk, the word ought here uh, is a very strong word. It means to bind ourselves to this, to doing this. That is, it's a moral obligation for us as Christians, for his believers, to walk as he walked, because he walks in righteousness and in light and not in darkness. Many of us, of us before our conversion, perhaps, walked in great darkness. But everyone that's unconverted is in darkness, as we note later on in this passage. But we who are in Christ are walking uh, in the light. And uh, Dr. David Smith said that this conforming of our lives to Jesus Christ is an evidence of our abiding union in Him. We get like Him by imitating Him, and our likeness to Him is incontestable evidence to ourselves and to the world. That we are his. <coughs> As a son's likeness to his father proves their relationship. May God give us grace to, as we abide in him, as we are in union with him, uh, show forth that union. Peter in 2 Peter verses. 2 and 3, chapter 1, says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according to his divine power, hath given unto us, that is, by our union with Christ, in Christ, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All that we need all that God wills for us to have is in Christ. And we are in union with him through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and to virtue. So we are to, as Jesus said, walk as he walked. We are to take up our cross. Those things that God has given for us to bear. We are to carry those burdens because he has good intentions in putting those things upon us. We ought to say when something is put upon us, you know, by the good providence of God, uh, God has given me such and such. Because God does these things for our good. So as we walk with him, uh, the Lord will give us those things burdens to bear, and we are called to follow him, counted blessing. We may be uh, those who he has called and carry the burden. Now, he says, my yoke is easy, a 
our Lord Jesus Christ, and my burden is light. Because uh, he gives that uh, all-sufficient grace to enable us to carry that burden. So the first thing, we've got to be in union with Christ. Or else, we cannot move on to the second and third point. That is, walk as Christ walked and love one another. We can't do that. We cannot love one another as we ought if we're not in Christ. We see in verses 7 and 8, the scripture says, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which he heard uh, from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him that is in Christ. It's true in him and in you. And that commandment that's true in Christ is that he loves. And that thing that is true of us because we are in him is that we are to also love God and to love others. We're to love our enemies, the scripture says. Our Lord teaches that. And to put on uh, off darkness and to walk in the light. I would like to just take a moment, <coughs> if you will, and note in verse 7, <clears throat> he speaks about the new commandment, the old commandment. Now, in verse 7, when he says, I write no new commandment, uh, he's talking about it's not new with respect to, to kind or in respect to substance. In other words, the commandment that he's talking about is loving others. Uh, and it's not a new commandment. Uh, Cain was to love Abel way back at the beginning. But yet, uh, he says, it is an old commandment that has been from the beginning, that is from the beginning of time. The love of God uh, shed abroad upon his creation. And then when he created us uh, in uh, his likeness, he created us uh, with love. And, of course, the fall came, and man then began to hate. So the old commandment, which is to love, that is spoken of here uh, in verse 7, is the word which you have heard from the beginning. That is, from the beginning of your conversion, you learned this old commandment. It was new to you by way of experience. A person who is unconverted does not know this love of God that he gives to his people. But only those who are in union with him know about that love that we are to have for God is our creator and that love that we are to have for one another. That love that we're supposed to have for our enemies. In John chapter 13, verses, verse 34, the scripture says something of this new commandment. <clears throat> A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus said, that you also love one another. I've loved you, you are to love me. It's new because it's something that has come to them by the grace of God in the work of regeneration. John 15, 12, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And loving others is walking as Jesus walked. 1 John 3, 23. You know, the whole book of 1 John is, is about evidences of a true conversion, of having a life that is truly regenerate. Various evidences. The chief evidence, of course, is love to God and also love to one another. 1 John 3, 23 says, and this is his commandment that we 
should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us a commandment. The unbeliever does not have the love that a believer has. We know that because it says in John 5, 38 through verse 42, And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believed not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye, or ye shall know that you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Ye will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you. And he's talking to the unbeliever. I know you, Jesus said, that you have not the love of God in you. So as long as sinners remain uh, unbelieving and and penitent, they can never walk with Christ because they can't love as they are commanded to love. There's a commentary by Bengal. He's a man of several centuries ago, a godly expositor. He says, where love is not... Their hatred is, for the heart cannot remain void. Either there will be hate or there will be love. And we know uh, from the scriptures that we are given here that we have come to know the love of God. That is his commandment here uh, in verse 7, here called the new commandment because it is something newly experienced to those who are converted. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which saying is true in him, that is, Christ loves. And it's now true in you. As you read through the epistles of the Apostle Paul, you find that uh, he looked for evidences of those churches where he went preaching. And where he went to plant churches. And he could see whether uh, they had really truly received the gospel by the fruit that they were bearing. And uh, one of the great fruits that he looked for was their love for one another. And uh, you will note uh, as he uh, sees that grace of love amongst them, uh, he tells them uh, that uh, he is... uh, most assured of their faith because they are manifesting the love of God. And so, as we walk with God, we must remember God has called us to love others and to, to even love those that are difficult to love, even our enemies. Also, I would like for us to note, uh, thirdly here, in verses 9 through 11, that if we are going to walk with Jesus Christ, walk as he walked, we must walk in the light and not in darkness. Now, here John uses light and darkness. It's a a very similar uh, parallel to Uh, The flesh and the spirit. Walking in the flesh means that you're doing those sinful things uh, that are contrary to the commandments of God. But to walk in the spirit uh, means that you're walking according to the commandments of God. You are uh, walking uh, in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we note in verses 9 through 11, he that saith he is in the the light, the, the light here refers, to, I do believe, to Christ as the light, but Christ as our righteousness. He that saith he is in the light, that he has the righteousness of Christ, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even unto now. So he's saying, 
in the preceding verses, as you walk with the Lord, you must love your brother. But secondly, we must walk in the light. If we're not walking in the light of, of the righteousness of God's revelation and the light of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we are in darkness even until now. In other words, a person is still in an unbeliever, even though he may profess Christianity. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is non occasion of stumbling in him. We find that the uh, Lord Jesus Christ here uh, has taught us that we are to walk uh, in righteousness according to the commandments of the, of the Scriptures. This is the light. If you'll turn to uh, Galatians 5.22, we'll see uh, the darkness and light uh, revealed, explained to us further. Galatians 5.22. First of all, let's note darkness, sin, wickedness. This uh, is oftentimes called the flesh, walking in the flesh. And then, of course, the uh, walking after the Spirit is given to us beginning in verse 22, manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. But here's what it means to walk in darkness. The flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, verse 17, Galatians 5. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So we live in a time when especially at this time of the year, people are making all kinds of resolutions. And uh, it isn't long before they're realizing, I cannot do the things that I would. Well, we know uh, it, uh, it takes the power of, of the Spirit of God working in us to enable us to do the things that we should do. We cannot bring forth fruit that is pleasing to God if we are not a branch connected to the vine. That's what it says in John 15. Jesus said, apart from me, the vine, you, uh, claiming to be a branch if you're just a mere professor, you can do nothing. Disconnect the branch from the vine and uh, it will die. But here we want to note what it means. What does it look like to walk in darkness? And we have to see it by its deeds. And we see it here in Galatians 5, 17 and following. Verse 18, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. For the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, all of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who lie, whose lives are, are walking after these things and not after Christ are evidencing that they are in darkness. Those uh, who are in the light will manifest by their walk that they are bearing the fruit of the Spirit, which we see in verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, as the scripture that we're looking at in 1 John has already stated. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So we see, beloved, 
that our walk consists of either walking in darkness or walking in the light. Now, certainly, we do not walk a perfect life, but the general character of, of, our, of our walk will reflect a righteous life. Our righteousness, of course, is the imputed righteousness of Christ as our justification. In our sanctification, we're putting off the old man. We still have remaining, a remaining sin principle that we fight against by the word of God and, and prayer and through God's Holy Spirit. But those who are in darkness are of the seed of the devil. And uh, they cannot help but do the evil deeds that they do. You know, uh, so often uh, we see uh, tragedies happen and uh, people who are unbelieving are baffled by it. They don't understand it. They have a pretty good perception of themselves as, as a person. They think, they, they think of man as being generally good. Uh, he's just got some uh, weaknesses. But we know that man apart from Jesus Christ, is totally depraved and capable of anything. And so we know that uh, we are in the light, beloved, if we're, our conduct is after the ma manner that is, is uh, after the manner of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God give us grace to uh, walk in the light and that we might more and more bring forth fruits of righteousness. Yes, there is a great deal of spiritual darkness. I know there are many problems that uh, we are faced with in this generation. Uh, but there are many greater concerns, and that is the spiritual concerns, the, the soul of individuals and of the soul of our country. It is... It amazes me how far adrift we have gone away from God. And if we would have lives that would be filled with joy and love, we must be in Christ and must receive the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God stir up our hearts to evangelize and to proclaim that word of the gospel that we may see many coming to faith. In our day, we do see much spiritual darkness uh, embedded in the minds of those in this world. Words of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he spoke to the unrepentant souls in his day, uh, were to repent. We see in John 12, 34, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? That is speaking of his crucifixion. Then Jesus said unto them, Ye yet a little while is the light that is Christ, and the gospel which he preached is with you. Walk, he said, to those who were his adversaries. He exhorted them to walk in the light while you have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have the light, walk in the light. Believe in the light that ye may be the children of light. It was a sad condition in, indeed for the children of Israel to have Jesus Christ so plainly before their eyes, showing them how they are to live, teaching them how they should live, teaching them to repent. And yet so many of them died in unbelief. Many who hear Jesus preached plainly and the gospel preached plainly 
even witness miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ, continue to remain in darkness. And they will come to that day of judgment and give an account of themselves as we read in Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he, our Lord Jesus Christ, then say also unto them on the left hand, that is those who are unbelieving, those who are walking in darkness, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. But thank God that uh, he has, through Christ, given us hope in the gospel. He has given us his love and the light of his righteousness, his righteousness imputed to us. Thus Paul says, but ye brethren are not in darkness. As a believer, we're not in the world around us. Uh, the unbelieving world around us is in darkness. And uh, he says to the believers, uh, you are not in darkness. That that day of judgment, when it comes, it will come as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. That is, you are to walk righteously and not wickedly as the sons of darkness. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, that is, we who are of the light, those of us who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. This is walking as Jesus walked. Be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Those who walk in darkness know not what awaits them. They stumble as one in a dark place. They know not that everlasting hell awaits those who do not repent. But God has not appointed us who are of the light to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. The apostle, as he writes to the church at Ephesus, says in chapter 5, verses 7 through 12, Be not ye therefore partakers with them, that is, with those who walk in darkness. You are those who walk in the light. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth. That's what the fruit of one who is walking or is a child of light evidences. Goodness and Righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. In, in some, what the apostle is saying, walk as Jesus walked. Because you are children of light. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, those in darkness. And so, dear Christian, uh, let us pray for grace to walk as Jesus walked, to walk in love, uh, to walk uh, in love, and to walk in the light of Jesus Christ. John 13, 15, 
our Lord said, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. It is well summed up by another who says, the whole meaning of this message to walk as Jesus walked is that the main principle of walking as Christ walked is to love the brethren and to live in the light. The Christian faith puts love to the brethren on the new and the highest motive instinctive love to Christ who first loved us, constraining us to love all, even our enemies, thereby walking in the steps of Him who loved us when we were enemies. Scripture makes it clear that there are consequences for our actions. Walking in darkness is certain is a certain way for destruction. Let us learn to love one another more. How comforting it is to know that as we love others, as Christ loved us by grace, we have an unimpeded path for the year 2015. May God give us grace to walk as Jesus walked. Amen. I would like to close with a word of prayer and then we'll have the Lord's Supper.